The Super Soko CU Mini really does live up to its name. It actually weighs in at just 50 kilograms and therefore I can even lift it up with my own hands. And I'm not exactly the strongest person in the world. Now it costs 1,700 pounds and can be ridden by someone who's 16 and has got a CBT or of course if you've got an AM license. Now the bike itself has got a two year warranty while the battery has a three year warranty. So in this video, we're going to see if it's actually worth its price tag and how it compares to some of its rivals. Now to kick off this review, I would like to talk about its design. And here it's actually very sleek and stylish. It's available in a few different color finishes and has got some very nice looking LED lights at the front and at the rear. Now the bike itself weighs in at just 50 kilograms and bearing in mind there's seven kilograms that's actually accounted for for the battery, which sits just underneath the seat. And as such means that when you do take out the battery, or of course, if you've got it in, it is actually a very lightweight bike. So it can easily be toppled over. Just worth considering. Now thankfully you have got a centre stand but you do not have a side stand. Nonetheless the centre stand is very easy to initiate and given the lightweight nature of the bike it won't cause any sort of problems. Now when it comes to your storage capacity you've actually not got any because the battery resides underneath the seat. As such you've only got a small little hook that's found towards the front of the bike. Of course you can fit a rear box or of course take a backpack if you wish. Now as for the use of technology you've got a USB type A port that provides charge to a smartphone although this will suck up some of your battery so just bear that in mind mind and we'll touch upon why this is very important very shortly. Then you've got an LCD display that provides you the percentage remaining of the battery and also your speedometer. There's also a trip counter which I couldn't figure out how to reset which does seem a little bit odd. Furthermore the battery remaining is not actually mentioned in miles or kilometers and instead in percentage which is not exactly really ideal when you're going around so that you can't actually factor in how far you can actually go. And again this is very important given the limited amount of range that this bike has. Now aside from that you have also got the use of tracking capabilities at least according to the Super Soka websites but as far as I'm aware there is no app integration with the CU Mini and as such means that I'm not really sure how you can actually track this bike. Now on the subject of tracking you have also got an alarm which can be initiated it's very easy to lock and unlock the bike and therefore means that you can get up and go very easily. Now this will actually initiate a small little sound so for example if I were to lock it and then shake the bike around or let's say do something next to it, it's going to make a little bit of a sound. So of course this can be disabled when you unlock the bike or of course when it chooses to unlock and then you can of course initiate it. Now for you to access the battery compartment, you'll have to use the key and this effectively means that you just have to twist the key clockwise and then you can reveal the battery compartment. Now the battery is actually extremely lightweight, as I mentioned around seven kilograms and therefore makes it very easy if you're going to be taking it up and downstairs. The only complaint, however, is that the actual seat compartment, let's say if we take the key out, doesn't exactly close properly. The locking mechanism doesn't seem to hit. So you have to really give it a good slam or indeed a good shove in order to make sure that it locks in place. So a little bit of cause for concern when it comes to the overall build quality of the bike. Now, aside from this, when it comes to interacting with the bike, you have got the buttons. And I'm not exactly premiumly built, but I've got no real complaint with them. However, the fact that there is no push to cancel feature on the indicator is a real shame. Yet again, something I've highlighted in the past with some of its competitors. Now indeed in this respect means that you're going to have to move it to its center position every single time and that can be quite a faff specifically if you're wearing pretty large gloves. Now I did just reference its battery which is quite light and there's a reason behind that it's because it has a 1.1 kilowatt hour capacity and as we go up this hill and the bike really struggles we'll touch upon performance very shortly now when it comes to its 1.1 kilowatt hour battery it has a claimed range of just 25 miles whereas actually in reality it has a real world range of a mere 17 miles yes you heard that right 1.7 17 now, putting that into perspective and as to how ridiculous that is, some e-bikes out there on the market have a range of roughly 30 to 50 miles, some of them even pushing over 60 miles, depending on which battery pack you go for or indeed which configuration. But that means that the CU Mini really does not have that amount of battery that you'd want and therefore means that even if you're commuting to London and going back, then I actually found myself having to recharge midway through. Now, speaking of recharging, it will take you a whopping seven hours to recharge. Seven hours! Are you kidding me? Seven hours. So that effectively means that for every two and a half hours, you're getting a singular mile. Just put that into perspective, people. That is 
ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. So yes indeed it does take quite a while to charge and more so the charger itself is actually pretty noisy. There's a little fan and therefore when you have it connected up to either the bike or the battery pack externally it will actually make a little bit of a noise. And I actually recently realized that someone had made a comment about another Super Soko bike and I think there was also another one from Sunra that the actual bike charger making noise does actually hinder them actually getting the bike because they they're going to be charging at work and therefore they don't want to annoy their colleagues. Very valid point and something that I very much pointed out on those reviews and the same applies to the CU Mini. Now when it comes to actually riding the bike, due to its very lightweight nature, it's actually very nimble and very fun to ride. Indeed over here if I'm just going to be riding around, I just feel that I've just got a great ease of going in any sort of direction that I wish and it makes for an absolutely pleasurable experience but that's not to say that it is nippy far far from it see actually when it comes to your overall performance you have got 0.6 kilowatt motor which dispatches one kilowatt of power now when it came to my own test using the race logic performance box touch I had it tested from 0 to 20 miles an hour in 13.81 seconds and from 10 to 20 miles an hour in 10.81 four eight seconds and therefore means that it is not exactly the most nippy thing in the world now here I'm slightly downhill I'm just gonna pull over and I'm just gonna show you in terms of its performance that how it's actually pretty poor now I'm just gonna pull over yep let's go full throttle here by the way Th full throttle and we're getting to 20 miles an hour now which is the limit now let me just try that in the opposite way because well we're gonna go uphill this time and I'm just going to demonstrate how slow this is. Specifically, we're going to go uphill and we're just a bike person there. If they had an e-bike, they'll probably absolutely outpedal me. So we're going to go now. Full throttle, by the way. This is full throttle. Two, three miles an hour, five miles an hour, six miles an hour. Now the Audi behind me is probably wondering, what on earth is this person doing? Ten miles an hour. We are really, really struggling. And here we go. The car's going to pass me at ten miles an hour. And I'm going uphill at nine miles an hour. I can't stress how ridiculous this is and yes yeah the performance is pretty bad now its top speed is roughly 26 miles an hour which isn't too shabby but it is still not that great so in in one of my tests I went around on in London I actually ended up being in a 40 mile an hour zone just by complete accident by the way it's not because I planned to do and it was actually pretty scary because I had no power whatsoever and there were trucks passing me and I just didn't feel safe whatsoever. Equally, due to the lack of power that's available, even when I am just going around in and around traffic within the inner city centre, I don't feel I've got enough power to get myself out of a hairy situation. So right there I went full throttle and I couldn't exactly make a quick getaway. So for example, if I had to make a quick manoeuvre, I would feel like I just wouldn't have the power to do it. So this bike, aside from its build quality and the buttons that I've mentioned before, the overall battery, the range, the performance are really disappointing. Now on the flip side, you have got good stopping power, which should come as almost no surprise. You've got a dual 130 millimeter disc brakes, but as far as I'm aware, you do not have ABS. Although I think you will struggle if you actually need ABS on such a bike because it's got very little power altogether. And in this respect, you have also got the front and rear tires that sit on 70, 90, 12. So in 12 inch tires uh, or rims, should I say more specifically. So anyway, this is what my thoughts are about the bike and I'd be just curious to know what you make of it. And in all honesty, I just think that it's a little bit of a ridiculous bike. It doesn't make much sense. An e-bike can go further. It's also more practical because I can pedal when I run out of charge. I can't do that on this. It also has seven hours to recharge. And furthermore, it costs 1,700 pounds, requires a CBT. So therefore you have to be over 16. You have to also potentially have a bike license, which can cost you even more money. And of course a CBT to renew it every two years, cost you roughly 150 pounds. I just don't really see the point in it. And I can't see ourselves ever recommending this over an e-bike, or of course other, in comparison to other electric mopeds. Now granted it is cheaper in comparison to what else you can find, but I suspect most people will either want to spend the extra money or just completely miss it altogether and just realize, you know what, I'll just get an e-bike instead. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And of course, if you like this independent detail review, definitely do drop a like, subscribe and hit that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated and allows us to continue delivering honest reviews like this one. So as such, I've been Chris from Totally EV and I will see you, pun intended, later. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.